Uh, so, uh, Liam, Simon, who'd like to go first in telling me what the hell is going on? <laughs> it depends if you want the short or long answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure there is. I'm not sure there is a short answer, is there? No, there isn't, and I think um, you know me and Liam will be able to cover this between us. But I just think there's a number of issues here, Mark. It's it's obviously with Graham Potter. He's he's struggling to make his mark at the moment, but I. I personally believe this is a issues that it's it's like a there's so many issues here. We're talking about change of ownership, change of manager, all in a short amount of time, change of players even, and it's just not working. I don't think we will see signs of the new ownership, new management, new recruitment team really starting to see the benefits of it until well now next season at the earliest it almost feels like this season is a write-off it it does remind me a lot of 2015-16 um certainly on the pitch um but of course Chelsea then still had the the, the old regime certain familiar figures around the place certain key players um but this squad needed a massive rebuild anyway and I, I I do think that one of the things we're seeing is that the recruitment over the last few years not just the summer um, has not been good enough, and and Chelsea have been left with a squad that is a bit of a mishmash and needed a a big overhaul, and will continue to do so. Stu, um, just a bigger picture, and then we'll and then we'll do Potter and on the pitch, and then we'll do recruitment and and off the pitch. But just bigger picture, Liam, um, a couple of things really. There, there was a time when we were doing Manchester United podcast, and and one of the constant things that Laurie would say to me is it feels like everybody at Manchester United at the moment is learning on the job that they, they aren't fully um, settled into the role that they are doing. Now that may have been because they'd never done that role before. It also may have been that they were new at the club. You could say something similar here with Chelsea, couldn't you? There, there are people who may have not done roles before that they are currently fulfilling. And also for anybody Anybody, any of us, anybody in the world of work, you go to a new company, it takes time to settle in, We some, particularly in a management level. And we forget that within football. That definitely rings very true when you're looking at Chelsea right now at, at all levels, really. You have new owners who are learning the European football business um, and they are you know, getting some things right and getting some things wrong. And it's all very public um and, and and occasionally quite painful i think for fans to watch um you have a coach who has built a very promising career a very highly regarded reputation at lower levels but has never even been confronted with with something of this size in terms of a culture reset and a team rebuild um as, as graham potter is having to do now you have a recruitment team um that has barely got its feet under the table. Um, and, and most of these guys were not recruitment number ones at their previous clubs. They're kind of young, very promising uh, re recruitment executives who are also now trying to find the right way to work together in a structure that mm. doesn't appear to resemble any other European club. Um, you've got Todd Bowley, who you know, ha, ha, had been functioning as interim sporting director. Of course, the, the presence of, of this new recruitment team allows him maybe to take a little bit of a step back. We'll see how much of a step back the owners do take. Um, and on the pitch, this is clearly a squad in, I think Graham Potter used the words last week, a massive transitional period um, where you have players assembled by a, or for a succession of very different coaches some of whom are now clearly past their peak. Um, and uh, it's it's very difficult, depending on the changes you make to the team, to play a consistent style of football or even a consistent formation. And so I, I wrote after the, the second Manchester City game that Chelsea have an identity crisis at the moment. And it really does feel that way because you have a lot of fans pining for the best elements of what the old Chelsea were in their minds, um, even as recently as Thomas Tuchel. And you have a club that is yet to find its new identity in this new era. Let, let's, um, we'll do Graham Potter and on the field and then we'll, and then we'll do recruitment uh, and off the field. Um, 
I was doing a show with uh, with Chelsea legend, and I use that term ironically, Chris Sutton, uh, recently, <laughs> and he uh, he he was quite annoyed at Graham Potter in a in a press conference giving credit to Nottingham Forest after the game with Chelsea, and it led to a really interesting discussion about. If Graham Potter at Bright, as Brighton manager had given credit to Nottingham Forest after a draw, nobody would have raised an eyebrow. And yet there's almost a, an understanding that as soon as you become a manager of a, of a top six team, any kind of realism or honesty ought to go out of the window. And there's a, there's a, there's a different level to then how you speak. And I cited David Moyes at Manchester United example, when he said something about Manchester City being the level that United need to aspire to. And it all, all hell broke loose after that comment. So it is a, it's a real shift change, isn't it? For Potter, who is a really honest, really likable man to, to change that mentality a bit, to become a bit more belligerent. Would you say, Simon? Yeah, it's a, it's a bear some teeth. And I think it's one of the things that the fan base are not enjoying. You know, obviously, I'm um, generalising. But you, you're getting that impression. Of course, this is a fan base that are used to managers bearing their teeth uh, against their rivals. You know, Jose Mourinho, Conte, Tuchel. Uh, and Tuchel, uh, it's unfortunate for Potter that... that that he is following Tuchel for a number of reasons, obviously, Champions League winner, etc. But Tuchel is one of the best Chelsea managers in terms of the way he presented himself in front of a camera and the way he communicated for, for a num- on a number of issues. Of course, he, he dealt with one of the, the most difficult subjects in Chelsea's history with, with, with Abramovich sanctioning it and everything. Whereas Potter, it just seems very pleasant. And... and you know, if you think about how Chelsea won trophies, you know they were, they were tough. They 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 were nasty. They could be cynical. They could be, and and some of that came from the manager. Whereas Chelsea as a team look like they're too nice at the moment, and as a coach they've got someone that they th- the fans seem to think is a bit too nice. And he did show a side of how he really feels um, in a post match press conference um, a few days ago. Where where he sort of intimated, look, you know, just I come out here and I try to give the, the sort of essentially what you're saying, the, the positive side. But don't don't get me wrong, you know, I do have feelings, you know, I do have. I'm not like this all the time, but I think sometimes it would do him some good to try and show that side to him a bit more, especially when games have gone awry. Because to sort of come out and be all nice about the opposition, it it kind of does feel like well, you've just mirrored how the team have played on the pitch. Hmm. Liam? Yeah, I think um, I'd have to echo what what Simon said in terms of Graham Potter learning to talk like a Chelsea coach. You know, I I, I made that that Moyes comparison occurred to me as well. And and it's not clearly not a parallel that you want as Graham Potter in the first few months of this job. Um, He's too normal a person. (laughs) At the moment, uh, you, you, you know the, the I most guess, But that's sad, coaches. isn't it? Do you not think that reflect that <laughs> reflects more on the sport and the, in, the yeah. industry? That's who that reflects badly on. It reflects on the the personality traits that are rewarded in elite coaching. You know, you kind of have to be a bit of a me- megalomaniac, even a bit of a psychopath at times. Um, and you know, you can look at that both ways because the. The Chelsea coaches that have burned brightest didn't burn for very long. They burnt out after a year or two. And the whole idea of this is that Chelsea want Graham Potter to be the architect of a long-term project. And for that, you would think you maybe require a bit more emotional stability uh, and the ability to, to take victory and defeat you know, those two strangers, just the same um, a little bit. But I, I think in times like this, where there's so little to cling onto on the pitch, I think Chelsea fans also just want to see a little bit more sign of a, of a real person, really, as much as anything. And that's why I think, you know, Potter getting slightly snarkier last week when he was challenged, I think, to, to, to a greater degree than he has been so far in a press conference, 
was good because it showed part of his real personality. He's clearly not like this behind the scenes. I don't. He he couldn't have been a successful coach if he if he was just sort of talking pleasantries and and managerial cliches to his players. I don't think that's the way you inspire and motivate. He clearly has those skills, but he he's putting up a guard when he's talking to the media and publicly. Ha- and I think that's difficult yeah. for fans. He ha- he has those skills in abundance. I mean, he did a he did a master's in emotional intelligence. He knows he knows how people tick. He knows he knows that you can't treat everybody the same. You know the the emotional intelligence side of things. He is absolutely spot on. So maybe he is doing it the right way. Maybe he is, and and everybody else needs to adapt to what he's doing, Simon. But that sea change in mentality is going to take time, and it's going to take time. So talk about time. It's going to take time for the fans to adjust to to what Chelsea now are. I, I you know, as we saw at Manchester City, they're, they're chanting for Abramovich, they're chanting for Thomas Tuchel. I I understand, but it's pointless. You know, those guys are gone. It's it's a whole new Chelsea, um, and that's not going to help matters. It's sort of hankering over the past. I think Chelsea have had a an unprecedented. You know, twenty years or so of success, the most successful club in English football. Um, but you know, there's an enormous amount of change. And Graham Potter, I I can understand why he doesn't he doesn't appeal to them because his CV doesn't appeal to them. He would he wouldn't have been hired by the previous owner. I think we can we can safely say that because Abramovich was a you know went for the best coaches, the ones with, with trophies to their name. And Frank Lampard was the exception. But even he, that was because of a transfer ban. And he still had that huge emotional time with the fans because of what he did for them as a player. Grand Potter has very little, apart from playing some nice football football for Brighton, to, to, to go for him in terms of how, how he appeals to the fan base. And it is going to take a lot of time. And that is the huge... The huge thing that that fans are going to have to adjust to is they're not used to waiting for something to happen. It's if something's going wrong, change gets someone else in, and they'll win a trophy. Um, but I, it could be a while before Chelsea win another trophy again. 